bumpy road, next one mile. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. I came here about 10 years ago. This land is about 300 acres owned by a friend of mine who lives down the hill. And so I just came more like a land caretaker. Because at that time I wanted to get away from the world. I was living in Austin, I had this whole life, and I think it was around 2008, 2009, the crash, the oh stock market crash. And, and that was a good window to be like, okay, I want a different life. Where's the house? I don't know, I was just thinking the same thing. Oh, there it is. Cool. This road was sort of here. It was in really bad shape. It's a water runoff for the hill. So we recently fixed it. We, about a year and a half ago, we actually uh, put all this gravel. But before, okay. you could only walk up here. Like, like, she I had, had to, to walk down the hill and walk up 20 yeah. minutes with a backpack full of groceries or or a truck or a good truck could make if it if he was yeah. home he could meet me in that one so we live like that for a little while and then slowly you know we've been improving making it yeah. more and more fun when i first came here I, th and I was camping mostly just part-time not really full-time out here but had a tent within a couple of months of just having a tent on the ground. I felt like there were too many bugs, too many different things. So I built this deck. So this deck probably 10 years ago was the first thing I made. So and it was like uh, a deck for a tent. It was just a deck for a tent. I think within a couple of months of just having a tent on the ground, I felt like there were too many bugs, too many different things. So I built this deck. So this deck probably 10 years ago was the first thing I made. I don't consider myself a carpenter. When I started building my, this deck, a friend came out, he's like, I'm not stepping a foot on your deck because I had no idea how to do it. I just thought a deck is just you put a thing, thing, and you put a thing. But then you don't realize there's give and sponge and you have to have every two feet. And so he came out, he's like, no, no, you got to have way more things. And so that's how I learned to build a deck. It was just a deck for a tent. Plus a little off the ground, it felt safer. And I'm kind of city raised, so I, you know, I wanted to be in nature so much, but I would get bothered too much. So run off and stay at my mom's house or stay in Austin. And the tent was like a teepee canvas. It's called soul pad. I don't know if you know about them. So half the deck was soul pad, half the deck was deck. And then I also stretched like a plastic tarp over it. It had this giant plastic tarp. It lasted three months till the elements took it apart. And then a couple years later, build the room. Did you have building experience? I had a little bit, but definitely not much, and it's definitely figuring out. And like people wanted to help me, but I had this uh, desire to see if I could do it myself. Uh, so it was a lot of it was trial and error. It really is just the desire to problem solve and being able to do it. So I built everything myself. I think initially I had friends who wanted to help and whatnot. People were sort of intrigued about my idea of just coming out here and doing nothing but building my homestead. but. I also had different jobs, so I was kind of in carpentry and uh, it, all my free time and free money I would bring and buy what I'm missing. Mostly it was like a lot of Craigslist and just dumpster diving and from different jobs collecting lumber and stuff. So this room was probably 40-50% reused materials. And as far as like windows and doors was all stuff I found for free and floor and so really uh, the only new stuff is the actual structural lumber. And most of it was also stuff I found. And then Marlena came and we built everything else. The floor was an old gym. Yeah, old gym floor that gym we... Floor. It was like a kid's, small kid's gym in town. And so they had like a red section, a yellow section. There was a lot of boards that were like this. They're just not treated. We didn't have enough red, so we painted a couple yeah, of them. Yeah, we painted a couple of them. <laughs> it's been a long time cleaning every board. These were pieces I pulled off different leftover construction sites. That's why I kind of checkered them. For about a couple of years, I worked in town for a carpenter. So any job I did, I would take the materials that people let me have. All of it went into the house. Tell so, me about how you used to, you didn't have power tools. Yeah, when I built this room, I didn't have a generator. So I figured out I could hook wires to my car and like run my car battery and run tools that way. But a lot of this room was built by sewing by hand. And I had a lot of time, so I was kind of like, I had a Three times, I was like, I'm just gonna take my time and build my house. And I had very limited resources. I think this room alone probably took me six months of slow. And again, I wasn't here full time, but I always wanted to be here more and more, which really full time didn't come in till we got together in 2016. Yeah. And it was just this room. It was just this room when she came. 
And like, there was a roof over the kitchen, but it was no actual kitchen. There was no running water. There no was no electricity. Shower. It was barely reception at that time. Reception has gotten way better, so we have full internet now. Oh, wow. But uh, on, our on our phones, yeah, yeah. not like Wi-Fi. There's no Wi-Fi. And we got really into solar. And the air conditioner is probably the hardest thing to connect to solar. It takes a lot, ten times more power than the refrigerator, which is ten times more power than everything else. How much power does it take to, to move these? The fan, this is actually very, it's called a DC motor fan. So it actually only takes, on the highest setting is 24 watts. Wow. Like right now it's probably taking about 10. It so it's really move. low. It's so large, they don't have options for DC fans. So yeah, it's, it's not very like extremely wanted a fan wide. this big, there just were no other fans. Yeah, there's, a, there's also the only fan you can get that's a DC motor fan. <laughs> And then I was learning as I go because when I bought this, I connected it straight to my DC battery and it wouldn't work and I didn't understand why. But then I read the label, it says DC motor. I still have to plug it into regular 110 ah. volt outlet. So that took me a moment to figure out. But a lot of things definitely plug and play and like figuring out. It's like, oh, it's just a DC motor, which means it's quiet and it doesn't use a lot of energy. Or this door is just Craigslist. Found it on Craigslist. I was looking around, there's nothing new in here. Like, I was just looking like everything is... <laughs> Second. Except for really? like literally the plywood for the walls. That's it. Yeah. Actually, the landlady who owned this land, her family has a restaurant. They tore down all these doors. So all these doors came off this restaurant. Oh, yeah. And she had like 16 of them. Nine feet, I think they are. Nine foot doors. And then the other ones she stored, but the moisture got in and they fell apart. So I got the glass and I built this whole other... I'll show you. We have another building where we used a lot of the glass. But then we have like these doors, for example, these were, I found them on the side of the road, literally. These were sliding glass doors that people have. Someone threw them away, I framed them into wood, and there are these shutters that we can open or close our kitchen. Yeah. Oh, so your kitchen is kind of, it's porous. It's kind of outdoors. Yeah. For the because summer, we keep it open. We don't like to run the AC unless it's like 98, 99. We just like the, it just feels less claustrophobic. There was like a Mexican caretaker who lived on this property. So he brought this floor from Mexico and left it there on the pallet. And it's been sitting there yeah. for God knows how long till the late, late lady finally was like, well, if you can use for it. And it was exactly the amount. Like I couldn't make under here. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I need a counter this wide. So in, in a way, everything here built itself. Nothing was pre-planned. It was kind of like, oh, what else do we need? And what's the cheapest or like most available thing we can grab? That door behind you is for Yeah, that was, I literally, I remember a friend of mine called me and says, there's a mansion next door to me that's being ripped down. They have some cute stuff standing outside. So I got this door. There's a big round window. You can walk through here. Okay. It's just a little walkway. This has so many windows. Is that That because? was a big idea, yes. My idea always, well, I love windows. I like being outside. So I think this, the drive was like, how can I make my existence as if I live outside? but uh, you know, still comfortable. I try to revive things, so everything I got, all these windows were kind of broken when we got them. Mm -hmm. And so I just revive and fix. So what's the climate all year round in here? It's, 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 you have four seasons and what, how Yeah, yeah. so basically that's one of the pluses why we're able to build the way we build and live this way. As you notice, there's no siding on the walls. It's mainly because the climate here is that it's very dry and so we are able to have a minimal build. Because normally, they would, a normal house, they would put layers of uh, drywall and on the outside you have layers of siding, which is enormous amount of extra work. And siding is not easy to combine. It's actually very expensive new because it's, it's easy to reuse. We recently redid our faucet. We redid it's it cool. where that was storage up there, but now we have a storage room. It's so that became my closet yeah. is upstairs. And go up. <laughs> and then I'm in my closet. And this is all my stuff here. Hanging. That's all Marlena stuff there. Everything's so custom. All based on need. You know? yeah. What we need, we add. Yeah, we just add little, we call them features. <laughs> we have a lot of little... I'll show you one in the kitchen. We have a thing where Marlena can't reach the jar, so I build like a oh, fold down little stuff oh, yeah. and stuff. This is how I get it. That is very thoughtful. <laughs> that is so unique. Everything in the bathroom is also Craigslist or found stuff. People always have extra tiles. Found this shower glass for 30 bucks. Normally they're like $600. Make it, yeah, all this tile was free. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this window was from that mansion that I was telling you that had it all pulled out. And this stuff a friend of mine gave us. That was paneling left over from this paneling job I did for somebody's house. I just had these strips left. I'm really good at reusing, so I'm, I'm not a hoarder, but I have been stashing a lot of things. I have a, still have a stash of all the windows we use. There's still a lot of windows left. Need more, 
structures. <laughs> And then we have our water storage. We will also oh. slowly accumulate. Anytime I see a cheaper, cheap enough tank on Craigslist, we grab it. Yeah, we all of our so all these used. <laughs> yeah, that's 700 gallons. That's 1,500 gallons. And do you have to be off grid water wise as well? I yeah, mean, this is all our water. But there's no access to water. You have to dig a well. You have to. Yes, and being on top of the hill digging a well is like fifty, sixty thousand dollars. And the water the here yeah. is nasty. And the water is awful. It's, it's yeah. very hard. So putting on rainwater catchment, what's the process? You have to have a certain kind of roof, I'm guessing? Or? Yeah, it's li literally anything. I mean, metal roof has nice ridges, so it kind of channels the water, and then you have the gutters that catch it, and it's just straight in. This is, I kept this simple. There's another thing that our house has where it first fills up the pipes, and that helps catch some of the dirt before it goes into the tank. And then I just open it, drain out the water, and then it refills itself again. It usually has a little bit of gunk and dirt that still somehow makes it onto this roof. That's another one, it's the same setup. So we can have less junk going in the tank. Because then sooner or later, after a few years, maybe hopefully five, six, seven years, we drain it, get in there and clean it. Because it does grow algae and the, the tanks get pretty nasty. A lot of things, everything's very manual. <laughs> it's like sailing a ship living out here. You have to, you have to maneuver it. Uh, we can see the whole utility closet. Okay. This is the filtration system. You got sediment filter, carbon filter, and then the bacteria filter, which is the UV filter. So it kills all viruses and bacteria. And this just clears stuff in. And rain, rainwater is pretty good, but we still have like plastic leaches into the water. The metal from the roof rust leaches into the water. So there's still a lot of stuff you want to, you don't want to just drink rainwater. And then there's the pump. We went through different pump companies and finally found the pump that's steady and works well. <laughs> sure flow. And then we have our propane, which we still use for cooking, and the water heater. So we have like all the batteries. We have eight batteries. So this is our normal inverter, runs for our house. And this one we got specifically for the air conditioners. And we can also run our gas propane generator. That's our backup to recharge our batteries if we need. So if it's cloudy for too long, or we want to run air conditioner past like 7 p.m., we can run our generator. But so the, all this is expensive? Like, what are we talking about for, you know, getting yourself off grid? It's expensive, I guess, to dig a well, but then what is it to have water tanks? Oh, the water tanks. The water tanks, I think we, we got each of them for like $300. I mean, new, they're probably a thousand. Like this tank is, is probably 1,200 new. We saw it on Craigslist for 300. We went and grabbed it. It's the solar power that's the solar the power is, is thing. Batteries. You can't get that used, obviously. Batteries yeah. used are not good. So you want to get new, you want to uh, get everything kind of together. And we just kept adding panels. So now we have 24 panels. Oh. On some level, this was something I dreamed about for a long time. We probably built it three years ago. Well, yeah, a little yeah. sky deck. It's a partial failure because I just didn't know what to do. I just went for it. And there's a place where you really have to duck. It's like right here, you have to kind of bend over and not hit your head. But it's a little bit crawl space. Has a trap door. But this was the point: is the sky deck, is the view. I love the views. One of the reasons I chose the spot on the hill is had the best view. So San Antonio is over there. Austin is over there. And you can sort of see them when it's really clear night. You can see the glows of the city. Uh, but overall, this that stays pretty dark here. Yeah. So. Are there a lot of other off-grid people out here or? The Texas definitely don't encourage people to be completely off-grid. Before, when I was learning this, I talked to a bunch of installers and they're like, I don't know anything about off-grid. They're like, it's, we only do on-grid systems. So I had to uh, figure it out myself. Yeah. yeah, so we started out with those four panels and we didn't have a refrigerator. We had a gas-powered refrigerator. We had four panels system and that worked really well. No problem. Sometimes we run out, we turn candles on. It's no big deal. And then we got the refrigerator, so we got three more. So we were able to get a refrigerator and we were able to get our AC, which also worked kind of minimal. Like we had to turn it off at six and to really watch because if we kind of forgot about it and didn't turn it off in time, it would drain our batteries. The problem with batteries, if you drain them too many times, you kind of damage them. So you actually, you have batteries, but you're not even supposed to discharge them more than like six, down to 60%, 80% they even say. Then they'll last 20 years. If you discharge them down to 50%, they only last like five years. If you discharge them to zero, they only last one year. So we have ruined batteries already. <laughs> this way, so we learned our lesson directly. A lot of things I learned here, I learned directly, and then we do better. Yes, so please. the cost of all that? I think we probably spent overall 10,000 on, on electricity. 
But I guess you're spending a lot less after that. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's no bills. Yeah, there's yeah no bills. we have no bills. But I think the biggest thing was that this was all kind of a dream cobbled together. So it's mm -hmm. like going off grid was the only way that it would have happened. I mean, right, it's like right. we, we can't get power lines here. What are we going to do? Like, right, right. So it's, it's not like option. it was like, oh, let's make the choice. Let's be off grid instead of on grid. It's more like, well, I would like to be able to charge my phone. Let's get a few solar panels. Because we did spend a while without power and that was its own life, you know, and then it eventually yeah. gets sick of that and you want to try something different. But like this neighborhood over there, they spent so much time and I'm sure we found out it's about $5,000 to stick a pole in, in the ground and then it's every 200 feet you have to put a pole. So they spend a ton of money developing this neighborhood because people don't trust solar yet. But I feel like if they knew what we know, they could have bought everybody their own solar system. And we can go to the garden. Let's do it like a the, the original beds were all dug into the earth. But we have what's called caliche, and it's like, what is it, calcified? About six inch Blanco. under the soil. There's been not good soil here at all. No, no soil. Yeah, Blanco. The reason it's called Blanco is because there's this white limestone all underground. We recently raised the beds. I dug out all the dirt, put rotting logs and compost inside, and put dirt back in, then raised the beds, then got more dirt and filled the beds. We dream of eventually like having full sustenance from the garden, but it's still, we're still playing. And chickens. They're still little, so we can't have them out on their own. So we are starting now to train them to let them be out. And then I use those mealy worms to coax them back in, which they will do anything for the worms, so. So obviously on the list is still we eat, we, we do drink milk, so we're thinking to get goats. So we, and also I consume a lot of honey, so we want to get bees, might as well have our own honey. It is, right? So we have all these ideas, not necessarily so much out of need, but more like it's kind of like a life project. How can we make a place where we don't have to leave as often? Because right now we don't even have to leave but once every two weeks, which is the best we have reached. Really? So when I was growing up, I'm actually from a country called Moldova. I came when I was 13 in 92 with my parents. It was part of the Soviet Union falling apart and everyone's running away. We had a country home. So we lived in the city and then my grandfather had a country home with fruit trees. So in the summers I would spend months there and that was definitely, as my, my childhood memories, that was the sweetest place. I hated the city, especially like post-communist Russia. I mean, it was a very, very dreary place. And so and then we came straight to Austin. I think I realize more and more that I'm very much a country-oriented person. Nature, I really need nature. And yeah, so finding this place, like, I found home, and I wanted to spend as much time as I could out here. And then when Marlena came, and she's very similar, but she kind of grew up, her childhood was sort of in the country in Mississippi. I moved to Austin after I graduated from college, and that was amazing, to live in a city where there's... My town had about 7,000 people in it. But when I moved out here, it's just like, ah, oh, just like everything in me unwound. And it's like, I'm home, I'm home. And then this project, we, when we got married, we, we pulled together, I think it was about 12,000, this whole cabin. And I had a lot of materials already accumulated. Like I had all the windows that I got for free a while ago. And, and so we designed it and built it in two months. I think it was a two months of just every day because we wanted to get it done by the wedding time. Yeah. This was kind of an example of what you can do by, I would say, 90% of the materials other than lumber are used and probably 10% of the lumber is used. So including everything that we got great deals on is about $12,000 for this house. This was going to be literally for people, we were sick of people staying in our living room. So this was going to be like a tiny little shack so that they can have their own space. And then as we start building and we're like, ah, oh, we yeah, should, just... we're already doing this. We're gonna make it big. And then little by little, like, oh, we're gonna add a kitchen too. Oh, we're gonna have a full shower. Like, oh, okay. Oh, we're gonna rent this. <laughs> yeah. Just swing away. This is the prime, prime spot. So Did imagine. you create that, the concept? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's one over there. It's hanging under the sky deck where we oh, were. Okay. I don't know okay. if you saw it, it but we, it was the first one we built and it was, just massive and heavy, and this one's just kind of light and simple. Oh yeah, I love With it. With the same setup. It's pretty simple. Like, the wood came from? Uh, leftovers. Mm -hmm. Leftovers from building, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just some cables. Yeah, these I, bu I bought, they're yeah, probably Home Depot. Mm -hmm. 
You gotta get it rated and everything just the right. <laughs> and then all windows and doors here were off Craigslist that I collected, including these. These I think were kind of, they came without a rail. So I think they were like 10 bucks each or 20 bucks each. And I built this from scratch, just got the perfect size rail. Was it hard to do? It took time. I mean, even here, like see all the little details, like I had to chisel all that out. Wow. Takes time to get it like precise. But it you closes really to. well. I'm often impressed with myself with something more. <laughs> You're like, yeah, well, like, wow, because it doesn't feel like I did it. Actually, it feels like it happened. And then Marlena's dad, actually, his profession was cabinetry. So he's a because I could never, I had no how to make like really professional ones, you know, that slide out. And mm. So he came and actually he taught me to do this and we did this together. This is maple wood, so it's, and we use them. We can make the shelf, those shelves. This used to be the gas fridge. It was actually, this, this was the size of it. Oh, okay. This happened so, last week. Yeah, it happened last week. It literally broke. We got it out, bought this one real quick. And then I shoved it in there because that's how the gas fridge used to be. And the gas fridge produced a lot of heat and gas. That's why it's oh. out of the room. It actually was supposed to be in there being ventilated. I love that you just are doing a little burner here. Really. It's like a, camp, it's a little fancier than a camper stove. Yeah. But it's still connected through a gas pipe. Goes to the gas. So we're still waiting for our shower glass for that shower to just complete this. Ah. The faucet is just I put together little brass pieces that don't rust so easily. And okay, well, everything is sold at hardware stores. Yeah, we were lucky to get all these windows. They all came from a mansion. They were fairly new, but the people didn't like the slats. So they replaced these with exactly the same windows, but no slats. And I lucky to, I was in the neighborhood, so to speak. And so I got, I scored them. And they all came together. So when I did this building, I was already kept in mind. Like I have four big windows, four small windows. Like what are we going to do? Yeah. And two glass doors. I had these windows probably a year. They were just sitting around waiting for their home. So a little front porch. I think for a lot of people what scares them is the labor part of it. Right. Because we have never hired a person yeah, we never, at all. And they're all figuring right. out, like even this last AC, like, wait a minute, it's got YouTube. I go on YouTube, so it's we like bought this for a hundred bucks, you buy the thing and the pump and the everything you need. And then I just watched this 30 minute video and I installed this AC and amazing, it works. So now we don't have to pay for anyone to come install ACs. But they're still solar, it looks like, right? Or this one's still solar. Yeah, so. And there's like little, actually everything is displayed because we did it all at once. I got the batteries, this is the inverter. This is a little backup thing. I put a wire underground that connects our houses so that I can flip a switch and charge their batteries because they only have four panels and sometimes they do run out. Especially now that the fridge depends on solar, we can't really. And you yeah. filter the water here on spot rather yeah, than Yeah, there's their the filter, floor. filter and UV filter right. and the water heater. And this is the only rain tank here because they don't seem to use much water. People come, I think they see rainwater. Everyone is very like respectful and they're just like, oh, we're gonna use much water. <laughs> Even though they can't totally use water. <laughs> and we, if we have to, we could buy water. There is an option where you can order a truck of 2000 gallons will come for a couple of hundred dollars. So this is our new, new structure. We poured the concrete foundation ourselves. This is the first time I decided to do a slab, which pouring concrete, which turned out to be a little cheaper, but more work, and it's gonna last a lot longer. So we did the slab here. I think the next building, I'll probably do a slab again. Mm -hmm. More work, more steady, more stable. And then, yeah, all these doors came from Craigslist. They're now we're extremely different from each other, but we painted them all wow. and cleaned them up and fixed them up and like sealed all the little door holes and put like our own little things. And, and then these doors I built from scratch, actually. Oh yeah, all that glass, remember I told you that I scored? It all went into these windows up top, including this. So I just, two by fours, right? I just kind of stuck it together and embedded the glass in it. And then those are the ones that come from the bottom of the doors. And I still need to make a little step. So this is basically my workshop, but the cool thing about it is we're gonna make it because as my workshop, it's probably not going to make as much money, but we're making it a convertible into an event space. Like people can have, have a like small oh, wedding or, or meditation, yoga thing or something. All my tool stuff is here. And there's a lot of room. All my stuff that used to be in that storage room. 
is now all my tools can be stashed away and then we'll make it really cute inside. That's what we're working on right now is to make the inside really cute. We'll insulate it in the ceiling and so you can quickly convert into event space. Yeah, this is the biggest building I've built so far. Did you need an, an engineer, an architect to, to build no, something? No, this is all, all, all us. And I got a little more help here, but only really from her dad and her brother came out a couple of times and helped me like push the metal roof up on top. But most of this building I did pretty much by myself with Marlene as occasionally like, come hold this for me. I think we just barely cleared 60,000 for everything we spent, obviously not including labor and not including the land. 60,000 for a couple structures and several. The new workshop, I'm kind of including in that too. Yeah. And water, water and solar too, are you including? I think I'm including that too. Wow. having downtime like we actually we work pretty constantly. much last three four years very yeah we just next thing and the next thing and we launch into it and we work so, all the time but we love it one of the fears is like running out of things to do <laughs> that thing is it was actually a commission work it was just a flat trailer that somebody asked me to build shower bathroom and sink and this was actually i was learning to weld my friend had a welder the trailer was just this thing it was literally just I knocked it together, screwed this plywood in from the inside. It was all very intuitive work. Then it turned out to be very bottom light, like it would swerve on the road. So I poured a bunch of concrete just to weigh it down. I made this huge block. And then since I had leftover tile, this is my mom actually did a remodel in her house. And there's a shower. Is that roofing material, the side there? Yeah, it's the same roofing that we used in many places. And this was a see-through roofing material used for greenhouses. Got it registered and everything. 1,600 really? pounds. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, I want to come out here and like, oh, maybe you build me a house and we buy some land over there. But to me, it's kind of like, well, if you come and I like make you a thing and you go there, you might go nuts. Because yeah. part of it was like me coming out here a little bit at a time and sometimes going crazy and being like, oh, this is too eerie or too it's... quiet. So it was the slow process of like coming out here, taking my time, building it, loving it, hating it. You know? 